Hello children. Today we'll discuss transportation. It is the third life process of your chapter. In this chap in this topic we we'll discuss that how the materials which are present in one part of the body transferred from one part to another. So what is transportation? It is a life process in which materials are transported from one part to another. This topic is divided into two parts. The first one is transportation plants. And the second one is transportation animals, which we will discuss later on. In plants, which are the two materials which need to be transported? There are two materials. First one is water along with minerals. And the second one is food, which is prepared in the leaves, must be transported to each and every part. This water and mineral is transported by the help of xylem from roots to the leaves. And the food is transported through phloem from leaves to each and every part. बच्चे दो मटेरियल ट्रांसपोर्ट होने हैं पहला है वाटर एंड मिनरल्स व्हिच इज ट्रांसपोर्टेड थ्रू जाइलम फ्रॉम रूट्स फ्रॉम द बॉटम ऑफ द प्लांट टू द लीव्स एंड द सेकंड वन इज फूड व्हिच इज प्रिपेयर्ड व्हिच इज सिंथेसाइज्ड इन द लीव्स इन द क्लोरोप्लास्ट इन द क्लोरोफिल ऑफ लीव्स बाय द हेल्प ऑफ फ्लोएम टिश्यू फ्रॉम लीव्स टू ईच एंड एवरी पार्ट so that each and every cell of the plant can take that food, oxidize that food and produce energy for the rest of the metabolic activities. So first we'll discuss the transportation of water and minerals. That is transportation through xylem. As we all are aware, Bache, water is the structural component of the cell as well as in plants, water is a necessary component for photosynthesis. Water is a raw material for photosynthesis. Without water, there is no photosynthesis takes place. Minerals, various minerals like nitrogen, phosphorus, magnesium, calcium, chlorine, all these are required by the plants for the performance of various metabolic activities, various photosynthetic activities. So these minerals are absorbed by the, by the plants through their roots and those are transported by the help of xylem. And xylem has a four components. The first one is xylem vessels. Second one is tracheids. Third one is xylem parenchyma. And the fourth one is xylem fibers. Out of these four components, only one component is living. Other three components are dead. So, which is xylem has four components as we have said in the previous class as well that xylem has four components in it, xylem vessels, tracheids, xylem parenchyma and xylem fibers. This xylem helps in the transportation of water and minerals from the roots, from the soil through roots to the upward parts to the leaves especially. In this xylem vessels and tracheids collectively known as tracheary elements as these two plays the major role in the transportation. Parenchyma plays the storage as well as a little bit of a literal transmission of water takes place through parenchyma. The major transporting or parts or the tissues in that is xylem vessels and xylem segments.
xylem vessel is made up of the various cells joining together end to end and having certain breakdown in the middle like this This is the vessels. These cells are joined and joined with each other, and then the middle portion is removed, and that's how a vessel is formed. These are dead cells because they do not contain the cytoplasm as well as the nucleus. That is the xylem vessel. In tracheids, a certainly different arrangement is there. Trachees transmit water very slowly from one part to another, and they also helps in the natural transmission. So that's the diagram of trachees. So this is the xylem tissue, and through this, the water and minerals is transported from roots to each and every part of the plant, especially to the leaves. Now this is the mechanism of movement of water along with the minerals through xylem. How water and minerals is transported through xylem? The soil particles have water particles around it. The capillary water is also there. This water will seep in by osmosis into the root hair. As root hair are very thin structures. So they will absorb water very easily from the soil particles. Along with that water, certain minerals are dissolved in it. So the water and minerals will comes into the root hair. From root hair, the water will goes into the epidermis, then to the root cortex. Then to endodermis, how this movement of water takes place? This movement takes place due to osmotic potential, due to osmotic pressure. As the water concentration here is high, the water will move from its higher concentration towards the lower concentration, and this movement through a semi-permeable membrane is known as osmosis. So this water keeps on moving from that that region of the root hair as the of the root, and then it goes to the root xylem, then to the shoot xylem, then to the leaf midrib, to the epidermal tissue, mesophyll, and through stomata. This water is transpired. Now, a term comes which is known as transpiration. What is transpiration? Loss of water vapors through tiny microscopic pores known as stomata of leaves is known as. Transpiration. This transpiration helps in the upward movement of water along with the minerals from roots to leaves. Now we'll discuss how this this occurs. How, what is the mechanism behind this? As that ninety eight percent of the total water absorbed by the plants is removed, is moved. Away to the atmosphere by transpiration. Due to this transpiration, a transpiration pull is created. A negative pull is created. 
a negative pressure is created at the top. As much as the leaves are at the top and the roots are at the bottom, if water is transpired from the leaves, so an area of low pressure is generated at the top, and the pressure of water at the bottom is quite high. So due to which a pressure gradient is generated. What is generated? A pressure gradient. A pressure difference is generated at the top. The pressure is quite high, and at the bottom, the pressure is quite sorry. At the top, the pressure is quite low, and at the top, at the bottom, the pressure is quite high. So water will starts to move from its higher pressure, that is from leaves, to the upward direction, that is towards the leaves. So water will starts to move from roots to leaves due to transpiration pull. This pull is also known as cohesion tension theory, as water moves in the upward direction because of the two forces. The one is cohesive forces, and the other one is adhesive forces. The force between the water molecules and the xylem. Or the wall of the xylem is known as cohesive force. Sorry, the force between the water and the water molecules is known as cohesive forces, and the force between the water molecules and the vessels and the boundary of the vessels is known as adhesive forces. This theory was discovered by Dixon and Jolly. There was two scientists who discovered the theory, the transpiration pull theory. The name of the theory in the Scientist is not in your syllabus. In tenth class, you must have to know just the transpiration pull. How this transpiration pull works in the movement of water and minerals from roots to the leaves. Transpiration pull creates a negative pressure. Due to that negative pressure, the water will starts to move from the bottom of the leaves. So the bottom of the plant that is from roots to the top that is towards the leaves. So that's how transpiration pull helps in the movement of water and minerals from roots to the leaves. As the transpiration pull helps in the upward movement of water and minerals from roots to leaves, this upward movement of water and minerals is known as ascent of sap. When water along with the minerals moves in the upward direction from roots towards the leaves, this movement is, this movement is known as ascent of sap. This ascent of sap is a passive process. The process in which no energy is required. No energy is used in the form of ATP as the pressure gradient, the negative pressure plays the part. Negative pressure plays the key role in the upward movement of water along with the minerals from roots towards the leaves. So this is a passive process. Now all this is the transportation of The second transportation in case of plants, food is transported in the form of sucrose through phloem. From leaves to each and every part. Phloem is composed of four parts, sieve tubes, Companion cells, phloem parenchyma, xylem also has a parenchyma, it is referred as xylem parenchyma, and phloem also has a parenchyma known as phloem parenchyma and phloem fibers. Out of these, three are living, and this one is dead. That is the difference between the xylem and phloem machine. Xylem has four components. Out of those four components, three were dead. 
and in this three are living and one is dead. In that, in xylem, three were dead and one was living, and in the phloem, out of these four type of cells, four type of tissues, the three is a three are living and one is dead. Sieve tubes and companion cells. Collectively known as sister cells. How they help in the transportation of water? Each and every cell consumes energy in the form of ATP and then transport the food material from leaves to each and every part. So this example is an active process. This transportation is an active process as the usage of ATP is in there that process is known as an active process. Whereas the transportation through xylem is a passive process. In that no energy is required. In that transport, uh, transpiration pull plays the role. So that's how the transportation of material occurs in plants.